Hey everybody, welcome back to Destination Treehouse. This was supposed to come out on Saturday, but it's Monday. I got really busy stuff going on this weekend, so I couldn't finish the episode in time. So here we are. Welcome to episode four of Destination Treehouse. We're at the packed episode for us today. Uh, even though it's one episode, I have a lot to say on The Sound of Metal. And that's kind of all we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we got an episode... Coming up this week as well, we got new episodes of The Loud House and the Casa Grandes coming up this week. Then it, I think we have a couple of weeks off, which I'm kind of glad about because we've gotten a lot th the last few months. And I, I I I don't mind having a couple of weeks off from new episodes to to kind of digest what we've put up, uh, or they put up for the last eight or nine weeks. So, yeah, I'm I'm fine with that. But yeah, welcome back. Uh, it's going to be a huge week here on the YouTube channel. i got a lot of videos planned. Another episode of this coming out on Saturday for, I think, The Worst Job is what we have, we have planned for that one. So, big, big, big week. But uh, let's stay in the present now with The Sound of Metal. So, The Sound of Metal is yet another Carl episode. Uh, I know that's going to turn some people away pretty fast here that... It's a Carl episode, but I will say I'm very proud of some pe a lot of people. They've kind of come around to him here in the late stages of the show, and that makes me happy. Because he kind of got the raw end of the deal in a lot of ways. Like, people are like, oh, Carl episode? I'm just going to move on. So, people are coming around to him here in the late stages of the show, and that makes me so happy. Especially in an episode like this, where there is a lot of character development and a short amount of time for especially a character of his caliber in earlier parts of the show. Um, so The Sound of Metal is an episode where he tries to get into the school band uh, and kind of promote his DJ alias and DJ sets. Um, can relate, but, uh, this kind of, um, this is kind of, um, a big deal for him. He wants to get that DJ side of him off the ground, and what better way than to join the school band and mischievously plan up a scheme to, well... Get your, uh, get your name out there at the expense of everyone else. Couldn't be me, right? Honestly, I wish, honestly, I wish I had the personal want to go as far as he did in, in some way. Not like interrupt someone else's gig for it, but you know. Be an expert marketer that is not afraid to go above and beyond to do something like this. I, I respect it. So, he goes undercover with the... Um, so, this entire episode about, is about how he goes undercover with the, high, the uh, Chavez Academy band and tries to... Uh, get his name out there. Does he succeed? Well, we'll talk about that a little later. So the episode kind of begins with uh, him trying to get his uh, gig started that he promoted the heck out of in the Chavez Academy cafeteria. To one person showing up, which is better than none, if you ask me. But, um, and that one person was Alexis, and my God, was that wholesome. Alexis showing up and being that support for Carl. Not something I would have expected earlier in the show. But hey, I absolutely love it. Uh, that they got that dynamic now. And that's when Alexis tells uh, Carl about the... Um, one, about how much he loves his flyer graphic. And those flyers are 10 out of 10. But also... When he tells Carl that his band is playing the halftime show for the Gatos. Uh, 
you know, not I, I'm not surprised. They have some high quality band members. So congrats to them. And that's when Carl wants to get in on the action and be a headliner. Not how it works, but I respect the hustle. So then he comes up with an ulterior motive, as he always does, to get on the band anyway, by playing the bassoon even better than Squidward. He somehow manages to play an instrument that requires you to blow into it better than Squidward. They both sound like trash, but one sounds better than the other. How that happens, I don't know. And then he, that's when he reveals his plan to Sergio, who comes in wondering what the heck that sound is. Uh, and Sergio gets involved because he wants to sell Carl's merchandise. And let me just put it out there, I would buy that merchandise. I would love like 10 of those plushies. Those plushies are perfect. And a t-shirt. And then, yeah, and a t-shirt. So this is when, um, so this is when they decide to, um, Carl decides to go to Alexis and tell tell him that he's joining the band. Let me just say this: they used a, I think they used a pose from the episode from Psychic and Chicken, the one they used to promote Carl, like changing into the uh, superhero. Uh, I think they used, like, one pose from that during this animation sequence. Yeah, they did. They 100% did. And I both love and hate that. that they use they used one from an episode coming later to promote an episode coming sooner. That's both weird and just some of the best marketing ever. But it worked. It worked, I guess. And it's... I think one of my favorite parts of this episode is Carl not realizing how bad he sounds. He plays that bassoon like trash. And he's like, not too shabby, huh? Well, if, if your idea of not too shabby is uh, breaking someone's ears... Then yeah, not too shabby. But if your idea of not too shabby is actually sounding coherent, you need to go back to the drawing board there, bud. Alexis lets him down easy, and like, he's like, maybe you should play a different instrument. So this leads into a sequence of Carl, Carl learning and learning how to play different instruments or. Not learning how to, I should say, but more like uh, being asked to try a couple instruments and just failing miserably at all of them. Alexis, before we get to that, though, Alexis reveals that he is freaking ripped. Legend, from I guess from playing uh, that tuba for so long. Got to carry a huge instrument. So then this is when we get into all the uh, fun stuff of Carl learning how to, or get, being asked to play instruments. I shouldn't say learning how to because he does not. Uh, being asked to play instruments and failing miserably. And then uh, one kid getting the brunt of the aftermath every single time. Poor kid. I don't know who he is. I don't know where he came from. But he got every single end of that thing. And I feel bad for him. Now, I would have uh, personally 
It's hard to not screw up playing that drum. I know it's heavy, but it's easy to play. Maybe that's just me being a drummer speaking, but I would have chosen that. I would have gotten used to the weight, probably. Because here's the problem. I don't notice, I didn't notice any, um, yeah, there was no, like, uh, shoulder thing to put over your shoulder. So I think that that was kind of setting him up for failure. Because it probably would have been easier for him if he had those shoulder straps to kind of put the drum on properly. Instead, the thing rolls into the kid that's been the butt of the joke and... Instead, he gets it over his head. We find that he loves to play the triangle, though. And he's a legend at it. It shouldn't be hard to play a triangle, though. And he, he, he can play it. He didn't drop it. He didn't throw it at anybody. He didn't eat the stick. So, you know... Uh, he's three for three there, and he sounds pretty good, so triangle is his instrument of choice. Although I'd stick to the DJ mixer. I'd stick to that in the end. And he, uh, he does, but in this, in this part of the episode, yeah, you can play the triangle, but I'd stick to the DJ mixer. I'd stick to it. You're good at it. You know how to do it. What's there to break? So this is uh, the half of the episode where they head out to the um, to the uh, stadium, and we begin with Carl doing a perfect impression of his mother, which I'm going to play now because I just have to play you that. Sorry I'm late. My mom made me take a billion photos and kept crying and being like, "We are so proud of you," <laughs> or whatever. Come on. That was a perfect impression of his mother. Uh, and a masterclass in voice acting from Alex Cazares. Come on. So perfect. So this is where Carl goes out to hatch his scheme with Sergio, who's been hiding under his hat, which is why, of course, you'd wear a big hat so you can hide someone under it. That's a joke. Don't actually do that. So then we head to, uh, so then Carl does a perfect yeet of Sergio into the, uh, booth, and they start heading out to do their gig. With, well, Carl says, I have no ulterior motive at all. Yeah, I bet you don't there, kid. I bet you don't. And that's when he goes out there to start with the rest of the band, and a bee starts swarming him. Dumb bee. And that's when, uh, you know, Sergio, well, that bee is torturing Carl. Sergio is torturing the announcer with ants. Come on, that's kind of mean. That's actually not kind of mean, that's just mean. And he thinks that, and Sergio thinks that waving your hand in front of your face, swatting at something is... The proper way to wave to start a plan, dumb bird. So he starts the DJ Carl stuff too early, and that's kind of when I I wish I had the balls to do that, honestly. But I don't. And then he continues with the fog machine, and that's when uh, the band realizes that they've been played masterfully by Carl. And you feel the hurt. I'm going to play this clip from uh, this part of the episode. Man. Carl, how could you? I don't feel, I don't sense a lot about any show. But when Alexis gets hurt, you feel it. Like, it hurts to see Alexis hurt. 
and you can see the look on Carl's face that he is hurt. And then Carl's like, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to get you guys your gig. And he does it with a freaking legendary motivational speech. One thing I never thought I would see from this kid when the show started. That is one of the reasons I like him so much. He is my dude in this series. For for one of this is one of those reasons. He has grown so much to the point. One, an episode like this in season one could have simply ended with him doing the scheme. It possibly backfiring. Maybe, maybe not. They could have maybe wrote it. Uh, they probably would have wrote it to where it didn't backfire. Uh, it just would have been a different outcome. Um, to into doing this and having the most motivational speeches and uh, feeling that remorse for doing these masterful legend like high level plans uh, that could hurt someone else and realizing the the outcome and the aftermath of them could actually affect someone else. So um, the kid's grown a lot and I'm very proud of him. And that's the, one of the biggest reasons I like him as a character now. So he does the motivational speech and goes through a lot of ways. Uh, goes through a way to get through uh, to the um, to the soccer team. And, well, he blocks him in with the triangle. One way to use the triangle is to block a door. Don't actually do that. But that buys the uh, band enough time to do their gig while the uh, referee is trying to find the team who's been locked in their locker room. So this is where we kind of get to the wrap of the episode where Carl runs like Sanic and saves the band with uh, an amazing one-note triangle solo. After all that, they move to the park where Carl does his next DJ Carl gig with five people, which is just wholesome that it's the band now supporting him after all of that. Like, that's just... Oh, so cute. So wholesome. I mean, after that, however, one of the people that went to the game, she's like, are you DJ Triangle? He's like, no, I'm DJ Carl, but I played the Triangle. Uh, my alias is DJ Carl. But I mean... He got fans. He got he accomplished what he wanted in the end. So if he has to incorporate the triangle a little bit into his sets for a little while, it gives him fans. They can get used to the rest of his music. I just punched my microphone. <laughs> um, it, they can get used to the rest of his music in between now and then. Obviously, they kind of like what he's playing, but they can get used to the rest of his music. Uh, if he incorporates a new triangle solo here and there. Come on. He got what he wanted to accomplish in the end. But yeah. That's going to do it for me. Or for this part of the review. Um, One of my favorite episodes, episodes of season 3. For the episode. For the uh, reason I mentioned earlier. It just shows Carl's true development. Uh, throughout his. um Throughout his. Uh, t uh, part time in the show. It's just, it's just shown how much he can really grow if he chooses to. And that's, that's good. But like I said, they could have written it a whole different way if it were season one, where he was more of that sarcastic or, 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 or scabby guy. But, um, they didn't. And they let it kind of ruin, or, or run its course, not ruin its course. What am I saying? run its course with uh, allowing him to grow as a person in the process. But yeah, that's all I got to say. So if you enjoyed this episode of, uh, or this part of the episode, uh, I'm just going to say this next episode will be out on Saturday. Uh, I'm going to be launching a per personal discord server um, name and everything still being worked on. Uh, so that'll be announced probably late in the week on my socials. 
But yeah, that's going to do it. If you enjoyed this episode of Destination Trials, please make sure to leave a like on it. Subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll see you next time for more.